Chiefs Kingdom. It's Monday morning. Happy Victory Monday. It's always Victory Monday when you're the Super Bowl champ, Steve. Today we're going to talk about Frank Clark. Should he come back to KC? What's the fallout if he does? We got Tyreek Hill sparring with everybody all over the NFL, and we're going to talk about some key schedule matchups. Stick around. Chiefs Kingdom. It's time for All Chiefed Up with your hosts, Steve and Mike Williams. From the bluegrass to the Red Sea, this is the Kingdom's Podcast. What's happening, Chiefs Kingdom? Welcome back to All Chiefed Up. We hope you're having a lovely Monday morning, and we're going to make it a little better for you by talking about some Chiefs football. Mike, how's it going? How was Mother's Day for you? Well, it wasn't very good for me because I'm not a mother, but to all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. (laughs) I know we're a day late, but we didn't get to talk to you guys over the weekend, so this is uh, our chance to say happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. And uh, yeah, Steve, that's about it. It was a it was a relaxing weekend. Yeah, it was good. So anyway, ready to get football back in, man. Me the too. off season's been a little slow. It's been just a little slow, and it's it's slow to the point that you know people are putting out these kind of random stories. And I, I picked one up from PFF, Mike, and it was one more move that every team in the AFC needs to make before the season starts. And I thought that that intrigued me a little bit. I'm this like, what do they be spicy? Like, what do they think the Chiefs need to do, right? So I, I had to look at the story, uh, but just a little bit uh, before that, they actually said that the Browns need to get Frank Clark, which is interesting. Hmm. So uh, I thought that would be a kind of a cool, cool thing if you thought about Frank Clark with uh, Miles Garrett and those guys there. That's kind of cool. Uh, and then they said that the Ravens needed to get Kareem Hunt, uh, which is interesting as well. I think he probably would be good on that team. Uh, there, I think there's a little bit left in Cream Hunt's tank, so uh, those two are intriguing. But they had the Chiefs um, saying that they need to get cornerback Anthony Brown. No. Like, why? No. <laughs> hey. Like, what? What no. for? Like That guy is, between him and Eli Apple, I don't know who gets burned more. Well, that's my thing, though. Like, on what planet, when you see our defensive back room, do you think that we need a 30-year-old Not that great cornerback. I don't understand what they're getting at with that. We may be one of the deepest DB rooms in all of the NFL. Who wrote this story? Because they need to be fired instantly. Dude, I don't know. But I thought it was funny. That's why I brought it up to you. Because I was just like, I I was expecting to see something interesting, right? And I was just like, this? This is what I get? Look, that's shoddy work. Whoever wrote that is a clown. (laughs) He doesn't know what he's talking about. They have no idea what football is. Uh, Why does Cleveland need Frank Clark when they just traded for Zadarius Smith, by the way? Uh, Exactly. I mean, this guy's an idiot. So, well, the thing about it is the reason why I brought it up. Obviously, this guy, whoever wrote this, is having some problems. He's on the struggle bus a little bit. But either way, it did kind of bring the question to my head like, Mike, if you think the chiefs need to make one more move in the off season, whether it's add to whatever position room Mm -hmm. or what it might be, what do you think that maybe one more move they could make in this off season that could actually improve the team and help them? Okay. That that's a tough question. It is. I really thought about this. Yeah. I put you on the spot, but I mean, (laughs) let's look at our, let's look at the defense first. I think our safeties are fine. I don't think there's anybody out there that we could go get that would change that safety room immensely. Uh, corner, no. Don't go get an aging 50-year-old burnt piece no. of toast. I don't want that. There's no corners out there. At the linebacker position, we're young, we're fast, we're smooth. My God, we've brought in some UDFAs that can flat-out play. Jack Cochran, coming back from last year, is going to be challenged by Isaiah Moore, North Carolina State. Cam Jones, Indiana. So many good linebackers are going to make this roster. Buddy Johnson, during the during the rookie camp, looked amazing. Uh, I think our linebacker core is going to be great. Leo's going to step up more this year. Then you start yeah. looking at our defensive line. I think defensive end and defensive tackle, we could always use – a more experienced pass rusher or a more experienced defensive tackle. I'll say one of those two. And if you look at offense, I think we're set with wide receiver. You guys were not getting DeAndre Hopkins. I would almost bet a billion dollars we're not getting DeAndre Hopkins. No. Um, we don't need another big tight end because of Kels, obviously. You know, I think our offensive line's pretty solid. You could maybe add a running back. Um, I don't even want to get into that. I think our running backs are fine. <laughs> I'm going to say defensive tackle or defensive end. Um, 
Frank Clark, no. I don't think that's the guy the end all be all. Um, defensive tackle would be pretty good. I just don't know if there's anybody out there worth signing at this point. Could you make a trade for somebody? Maybe. I ain't giving up nobody crazy, you know. Like, I'm not going to make a trade with, like, Washington to go get Trey uh, – wait, what's his name? Chase Young? Chase Young. Yeah. Maybe during the draft, if you would have said, oh, a third-round pick, I would have <laughs> maybe considered it. But So, well, here's the thing. Like, uh, Chase Young's a, a freaking beast. That's a good one that you brought up because we know that they didn't put him on his fifth-year option or didn't uh, take that. So, they might be willing to play ball Dylan Chase Young. And uh, there's a couple of guys that we might be willing to play ball with Dilling for Chase Young. And that starts with Legereus Sneed and Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Do you think that someone like Washington would see value in Clyde? Obviously, you have the Eric Bieniemy to Clyde connection there. And then, obviously, I think that you can see some kind of value in Legereus Sneed because he's a freaking beast of a right. corner. And they just went and got Emmanuel Forbes in the draft. People thought they reached on him a little bit. But, I mean... Legere Sneed, obviously they want some help with their cornerbacks. Yeah, Sneed is your is your value. That that's that's the piece. If you were Washington, that you would want. I don't think you would want Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Um, if we throw them in, then they might take them. But I think I mean that, they could use some help because they do have Antonio Gibson has not worked out to be what they thought he was going to be. He's just not right. lived up to it. And then they had Brian Robinson, I believe is his name, the guy yeah. he ended up getting shot last year. He had to go through all that crap in his rookie year. Uh, he's good, but I mean that leaves a lot of things open there. I don't know who else they have on their depth chart as far as running backs, um, but no one pops in my head that's a Clyde could Clyde could be helpful for them I mean I think there is some value to Clyde but I think his value in Kansas City has ran out in my opinion so I mean it is what I don't, it is okay look if I'm going this is so counterproductive to what I just said but if I'm making a trade <laughs> if I'm making a trade with Washington and it doesn't include Terry McLaurin I don't want it Let's man, it that, that would way. be nice. If it that would don't be nice. Terry McLaurin, I don't. Want there is it. a lot of uh, there is a lot of Chiefs kingdom that thinks we should get another wide receiver. I'm still seeing that in a lot of uh, you know Facebook groups and on Twitter uh, and stuff like Washington that. Washington actually drafted your boy this year, Steve. They they drafted Chris Rodriguez out of UK. Oh yeah, yeah, they did. I forgot about hey, that. They don't um, need Claude now. <laughs> no, Chris Rodriguez is a beast, uh, he's a but he's a totally player. different player, different kind of. Different kind of beast uh, than Clyde. Clyde's more of a should be like a receiving back and stuff. And uh, they actually Chris Rodriguez drafted, is that punch in the mouth guy, right? They drafted KJ Henry uh, Edge out of Clemson too. By the way, who plays Chase Young's side, so maybe they are right. going to look at, I, to get rid of Chase Young. Would Would you take Chase Young straight up for Legarius Need if Washington was willing to do it? Which I don't know if they would. Would you do it? Chiefs yes. Kingdom is about ready to come get you, depending on your answer. So think wisely. Yes, yes. I, I'm I'm trying to think. Like first of all, here's here's my thing. Um, I don't think that they're going to pay Lejerry Sneed. I just like we've said a million times before, the Chiefs do not have a track record of paying corners. So if you can get something out of them now, like go ahead and get some value. Why not do it instead of just letting them walk after the season? Um, Chase Young would be. <laughs> a ridiculous addition to our defensive end room, along with who you've already mentioned. So what what strikes you better? You want to sign back Frank Clark, or you want to you know do this or that, or you want to add Chase Young to that room? So I mean, I'm going to go with yes on that one because our our defensive backs we're in a good spot. Like you mentioned earlier, we're we're pretty daggone deep at corner. And uh, we're pretty young at corner. Like the guys that we got from last year's draft class, they've already got a season under the belt. They were excellent last year. So they're going to be even better this year. They went out and added Chamari Connor for this, for the, that exact reason, I think, is so they can go ahead and let Legere Sneed go. Uh, so I would say yes. And, yeah, if you guys want to get your pitchforks out and everything, that's cool with me. But I think that would be the smart move. Yeah, I think they're coming for you. I will tell you this. I'm with you. I don't think that I don't think that Legarius needs going to get the contract that he feels he should get here. Right. And whether Chiefs Kingdom likes it or not, whether we feel it's the right move or not, it would not surprise me if he doesn't turn out to be this year's uh, you know, the kid we traded to the Falcons. I forget his name. <laughs> Rashad Fenton. Rashad Fenton. This year's Rashad Fenton would not surprise me. 
you know, would I take him straight up for Chase Young? Chase Young's yet to play a full season, I believe. He's constantly injured. Right. But if you can get him into our system and you can get something out of him, I would almost take that trade. I, I almost would. Do you remember how awesome he was his rookie season? And right. I, mean, I mean, I think he's still, it's still in there somewhere. He's just right. battled injuries. And they're yeah. not going to, like, there's no way you could say, well, let's just trade uh, Sneed for Terry McLaurin. Well, they're not going to do that. They're That's not going to do that. So it's not going to happen. So the only thing you could say is maybe a straight up deal, but you never see player for player swaps. That's kind of one of those things you never really no, see. No, and it's not going to happen. Do you really think they're going to give up their, you know, first round pick they took, uh, put a lot of value in for. Lajarius need. I don't even think they would go for that, to be quite honest. Well, I mean, here's what they got. They've got um they've got Emmanuel Forbes and then yep. they've got Cameron Curl and Derek Forrest as their safeties. And um yeah, their nickelback star Tavis Martin, another rookie. So they drafted two rookies, Benjamin St. Juiced and Danny Johnson. So yes. What a trade target. What a trade target for us, right? They could definitely go get Legarius Sneed. That would be right. something we could look at. So what hey, they, who, what are, who better than Eric B. Enemy pounding the table for somebody that he knows in Legarius Sneed that could come in and be a, a locker room guy? Right. And let's get Clyde there too while we're at it. Let's just make it a monster deal. Is there any way that we could totally pull off getting Chase Young and Terry McLaurin? Like what would we have to give up for that? We could do Chase Young, Terry McLaurin, and we'll throw in Clyde and LeJarius Sneed. Sneed. We would have to give up probably second, second round pick second or something. Round pick. Probably at least a second round. Would you do I that? I would almost consider it. I'd I would almost do it. consider it. Probably in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Dude, can you imagine Scary Terry with Patrick hey, Mahomes, bro? <laughs> Chase Young and Terry McLaurin on this team is Jeez. automatic Super Bowl. <laughs> if it's not, I mean, I'm not saying it's an automatic win, which it is, but even if it's not, you're automatically picking 28 or worse. So are you telling me you're not going to give up pick number like 65 for Terry McLaurin, basically, and Chase Young? Like, get out of here. There's no way you're going to take that pick. Why I'd almost you? be willing like, to give up a second for the and next something two else. years. I'd yeah, give up a second for the next like, two years. Do I do I think they're gonna have some big blockbuster trade like that? No, no. But dude, I would be ecstatic if I saw that trade. Like if I woke up and I scrolled Twitter and that's what popped up in my face from Adam Schefter or Ian Rappaport or whoever, I'd throw my phone, man. I'd be super pumped dude, because uh, that's ridiculous. I'm gonna tell you, but right are now. they are they not a perfect trade target for us though? Hey, I'm not to sound like a pervert, but you know. I'm liking it right now. <laughs> Mikey Likey. That's what I like. If I woke up to that one, my friend, you know, I might have to, I don't know. I don't want to say what I'd do, but I'd do something. <laughs> It'd be a wild morning. Let's put it that way. Getting I tell a little you, horny over there. Yeah, I think we're getting a little out of control with the trade. <laughs> I don't, not with the comments, just the trade. I think that's just, it's not going to happen. So, I mean, yeah. if, we, if we come back to reality just for a little bit, snap it back, snap it back. We're back. Okay, right. so we're back to reality. Uh, Clyde's still with Clyde still with us. Clyde's still with the Chiefs. <laughs> womp, womp. <laughs> Sorry to ruin your guys' morning. Sorry it's Monday morning and we just ruined it. <laughs> if you're still with us at 52 minutes in, we've ruined your day. Um, <laughs> sorry. Whatever. But, they but all yeah. want that runway model on their team. So First speaking of, of Clyde, all, though. Hold on. I just, just real quick. This dude went to a fashion show instead of participating and celebrating the Super Bowl victory at the parade with all of Chiefs Kingdom. This guy's five foot tall. What kind of runway is he on? Like, what is going on? Like, I don't understand. Was he there modeling or was he there watching? Because either way, ignorant, stupid. Get him out of here. What is going on? He's modeling for Smurfs. What, (laughs) what is the, uh, what's the thing? It's a school for Stiller. Yeah. He's (laughs) Zoolander. Yeah, so he's kind of like Zoolander. He's like, he's modeling for ants. <laughs> That's what he does. What is this? A school for ants? Is this a model <laughs> show for ants with Clyde Edwards Hilaire? <laughs> this is hilarious. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to get you off track. So, yeah. Back to I reality. Would, Clyde's yeah. still a chief. And here's what I'm going to say. Yeah. Do you think, okay, we, we are under the firm belief that if we don't move Clyde, Clyde's coming back. He's going to be on a roster. We're probably going to run his legs off because why wouldn't you it's the last year he's going to be here we wasted a first round pick on this guy do you think that the chiefs have settled that we are going to have pacheco 
McKinnon, and Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Do you think Daenerys Prince is that number four? Do you think that there's somebody else that we could pick up, mm. maybe come roster cut time? Or do you think that we're just going to roll with three? I don't see us rolling with three, but maybe Andy wants to bring in a fullback. Maybe he's back to that again. No, uh, I think I think they'll roll with four halfbacks. I think he's moving on from the fullback. There's just no value there, right? I mean, we, the last time we saw real true value of fullback position was Anthony Sherman. I mean, Mike Burton wasn't bad, but I mean, what what does Mike Burton do for you? He comes in the game on third and short to either a carry the ball or block for the carrier. Um, I mean, it's like well, let's just map it out for the other team, right? Let's put Mike Burton on the field and let them know what we're doing on third and one. So yeah, there's not been a whole lot of value there to be honest. So, I mean, I think it's time to move on from fullback position. I mean, is, you know, it's kind of sad, I guess from the old school perspective, but I think that's a position that's kind of worked its way out of football, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I was trying to look over here. Did we bring in any fullback UDFAs? I was thinking we brought in a couple. I don't know. I I just don't see it happening. I think they're going to go with four halfbacks, man. And, And the thing about it is, could Daenerys Prince make the team? Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously, there's potential there. But you do have to, you know, get your expectation, expectations in check. Uh, he's a UDFA for a reason. There's a reason why. Every team in the NFL passed on him seven freaking times. Yeah. Okay? So, I mean, people really got to, you know, so, tone it down hey, just a little bit. The Chiefs did what? bring in a halfback slash fullback. To UDFA, uh, Tyler Roberts from the great powerhouse that is Merrimack. Mm-hmm. He's an H back from Merrimack. So, do you think the H back from Merrimack has a chance to walk on this team, Steve? I don't see mm, it. No, I don't see it. <laughs> We're getting her with a no on that one. Uh, no, I just don't. No, I don't think there's anything there. And your question's a good question. I think Daneric Prince could make the team, but more than likely he's going to be on that practice squad. I think if they put a fourth one in there from who we have now, it could be Jerry and Ely just to kind of mold in behind Jarek McKinnon a little bit and learn more about that position, learn more about pass blocking, picking up those blitzes and things like that. Because we already know he was the best receiving back in college football two years ago. We already know he looks like the fastest guy in the field every time he's out there. Uh, the dude was a natural running back. That was his position. They had him listed as wide receiver, and they still run him at wide receiver sometimes in uh, camp and things like that, and even list him that way on the roster. But he is a running back. Uh, so I think if they go with four that we already have, I still don't have Daneric Prince in. I just don't. Uh, I think that Jarek McKinnon offers us a lot more because, like I said, he could learn that – Jarek McKinnon role if they decide not to, to re-sign him again after next year because he's only on the one year. Um, and then also, uh, people's been asking about special teams. Who's going to do the punt returning? Who's going to do the kick returning? Guess who's awesome at that? Jerry Neely. So he's offering you a lot more than Daneric Prince is at the moment. Um, but I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't get sad about it. I think so Daneric Prince will be on the practice squad. I don't who, know. if any, who, if any, UDFAs do you think have a chance of making this roster? If Is Daneric Prince the highest one up that could make it for you, or do you think there's somebody above him that could possibly squeak on this roster? This is an unpopular opinion, um, but it's mine, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blurt it out. I don't think any of them are going to make the roster. I think that we're blowing, you know, we're hyping too much, right? They're UDFAs for a reason. I don't think any of them are going to make the roster. If one of them do, do you know who I think it'll be? I wonder if it's the same guy I'm thinking of. It'll be cornerback Khalif Hallisey. That's not who I was thinking of, but I like him. That would be the one that I would think could make the team because this dude, I mean, he's not Legarius Sneed per se, but he's somebody that can offer you right. something like that. I mean, the dude, you know, long, fast, and, right. and he'll hit the crap out of you. Like, so uh, that's where my money would be. Uh, but I don't know, man. I just don't, I don't, I'm not on the dare. I'm not on the Derek Prince train like everybody else. I think he's good. I think he's cool. Right. It's very interesting. It's intriguing. But I'm not putting him on the team right now. Right. Look, there's a few. Witherstone, the kid from Merrimack that goes with the halfback, uh, he's actually looked pretty good. I think he's got a little bit of a chance, but ultimately I think he it's gonna, he's going to get swamped. These guys have to beat Naze Johnson. Hallisey is, like you said, has a good chance. Um, Boy Doe from K-State, they like this kid. I think he has a chance. 
Um, but ultimately, I think Nazi Johnson's got the head up on him because he's been here a year. He went through the whole off season. He went through the full season on the practice squad. He actually come in and done a lot of good special teams work. There's a couple defensive ends that I really think can make the team. Truman Jones out of Harvard. That kid right there has a chance, but he's another small guy. So again, is B.J. Thompson going to be that guy? And then Harvard, you know, the the Harvard guy actually just gets put down to the practice squad. There's a linebacker, Isaiah Moore. I think he's got a shot to step in. All he's got to do is beat, uh, you know, Jack Cochran, I think is his name, that, that actually made the team last year and beat out Mike Rose from Iowa State. Remember that one? Everybody was like, Mike Rose, Mike Rose. Jack right. Cochran from South Dakota State outworked him, got on the practice squad. But I'm going to tell you the one guy, and this is the craziest thing you've ever heard, and you may even hate me. There's one guy at one position that is so oversaturated right now. I don't know how in the world they're even going to get these guys on the roster. But if there's one that could make this team out of nowhere, it's wide receiver Nico Remigio. I think Nico no. could ha- squeeze into that sixth spot. No, I don't. I've seen the hype. I've seen the hype because he's supposedly a great kick returner and stuff like that. But have you, seen Nico, have you seen Nico Remigio's um, athletic testing? I haven't. But I've, I've watched him on the field. And he plays a lot better than that. If you would, if you would like to go check out his Raz score, I, I, I advise you to do that because this guy is not right. somebody that is a typical Brett Beach, Andy Reid type guy. This is a guy uh, that I see maybe being on a practice squad. I just well, don't look, see it, man. But I mean, this, the, it, this is what I a think. lot of people. You're not alone. You're not alone. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people that are saying that. I think Daniel Sh- Harms from RGR likes him. There's a lot of people that do like Nico Remigio. But I'm just saying, he's I very. Think- Nico yeah. is a team captain. He is smart. He is quick. He's good with his with the ball in his hands. He offers you so much special teams ability. And like I think I know what you're talking about. I think I see somebody throw up an RAS score of him and it was low. But at the same time, dude, I've watched some highlights of this dude and he has one punt return where he catches it and does like four straight spin moves and just leaves everybody in the dirt. And it's like I don't get but I'm just saying for Nico Remigio to make this roster, you're probably having Justin Ross off the roster. Would Chiefs Kingdom's head ex- explode over Chief, that I one? Well, first of all, let's get this straight. Justin Ross is on the cut line already. Um, but do I think Nico Remigio is going to make the roster over Justin Ross? No, I do not. This guy's RAS score was a 4.89 out of 10. Uh, he, he scored a 1 in his height, a 3 in his weight. Uh, the only thing that he really excelled at was his bench. Uh, he, he had a nine on his bench, but I mean, his, uh, 40 yard dash is a four five, seven, his tw- uh, 20 yard splits, 2.68, his 10 yard splits only 1.57, uh, which is decent. But I mean, his, his shuttle is three cone or trash. I mean, there just guy just, he does not offer you what normally Andy Reed and Brett Veach want on the field at a wide receiver position or even a kick returning position for that matter. Well, Hey, we'll agree to disagree. I think the kid's good. Um, I'll send you. I'll send you some highlights just later tonight, and I'll let you look. I'm not saying um, he's a bad player, but and that RAS you. score. I mean, people people can kind of put too much into that too. So I'm not. I'm not one of those people that think that that means everything, right? Uh, but I do think that's kind of telling for a receiver or a kick returner. Like, hey, I don't know. We'll agree to disagree, Stephen. We'll agree to uh, disagree. Nico Remigio, I think he's a dark horse. I think he's a dark horse. Uh, okay, so I'll take Khalif Hallisey, and you take Nico Remigio, and we'll see We'll see if either of those can make the squad. Well, I mean, I'm at a huge disadvantage here. How do you get on the team? What? Well, actually, corner, though. We're pretty stacked at corner, too. I think, okay, right. it's fair. I think it's uh, very it's, fair. Okay, so it's we'll fair. Have to see. we'll have to see who... Uh, who gets it done and who don't. But I just don't think there's any UDFAs everybody should be going off about. Like, it's just, Hello. hey, let's, let, I got an idea. Let's not do the camp hype thing this year, Chiefs Kingdom. Let's do it. Let's don't do it. We'll do it. <laughs> we'll do it. I know. Have nothing better to do. It's going to happen. Anyway, Frank Clark. We're going to talk about Frank Clark a little bit. Chris Jones has been pounding the table to get Frank Clark back into Kansas City. We all know he got cut a while back. He had like, 21 million that he was owed this year and we weren't going to pay him that so he was cut he's still available and chris jones wants him back man patrick mahomes wants him back he retweeted chris jones who was pounding the table for frank clark and we've read a little bit of stuff about it mike so uh what do you think you think he's going to come back here or what i think there's it's easier said than done i think a lot of people are looking at frank clark and they're like hey 
playoff Frank Clark is worth having back. Uh, for the price we were going to have to pay him, no. He's not worth coming back. That's obviously why we had to cut him. We had to save some money, but we actually lost $7 million in dead cap money. Uh, that's already been tar- like put on this new uh, this new year's cap space. So we already owe Frank $7 million that basically we had to get rid of him for. So if we bring him back now, we're just adding more money onto that. At some point, it's it's like, hey, you may get a good deal on Frank, but you got to remember, you you lost seven million on this guy already. So right. it's one of those things where we've been drafting. We we've drafted, you know, two defensive ends. Uh, we got B.J. Thompson. We got Felix in the first round. Uh, right. We have several different things going on here. I know everybody's beating the table for uh, Frank Clark. But again, it's just so much easier said than done. I don't see Brett Veach pulling the trigger on this thing because Frank's just not, he doesn't even seem to be getting a lot of interest from other teams outside of Kansas City right now, to be honest. Not that I know of. Uh, we've discussed this before. Maybe it was part of the plan all along. Who knows? But I don't think so. I just don't think Frank Clark's getting a whole lot of interest just because his production's not exactly what it should be for what he usually gets paid uh, for his price range. He don't do a whole lot during the season. Obviously, we know he goes nuts in the playoffs, and he's good for our locker room. A lot of our guys like him, and he, he took over a leadership role last year, and that helped with George Karloftis. It could help with Felix. It could help with BJ. Uh, but is it worth uh, losing seven million and then paying them even more. I don't know about it, man. I know that uh, Heavy on Chiefs released a story that said if they do go after Frank Clark to get him back, that they might have to cut Mike Dana, uh, and that would save them about three million in cap space. Well, I've thought about this, and yeah, you probably would have to do something like that. According to Sport Track, we only have about two point four million dollars in cap space. Um, we've got to resign all of our rookies. Uh, we've got to possibly look into to getting more UDFAs in here, which, again, UDFAs are basically only going to be guaranteed what their signing bonus is. Right. But we've got so many things to do. And just adding Frank Clark onto it, I just don't see Frank Clark coming back and taking small money to be here. I just don't see it. I feel like he's at a point in his career where he wants to get another decently sized contract, and I just don't see him taking a sweetheart deal. He may act like it, but when the time comes, I just don't see it happening. So Chris right. Jones and a few of them may be disappointed. But yeah, getting back to Mac, uh, Mike Dana, I believe that is something that the Chiefs would have to look at. I believe if they cut uh, Mike Dana around June 1st, I believe. I don't. I think it might work both ways. But if you cut uh, Mike Dana, that's $3 million, almost $3 million they could free up. And it would almost make sense if if you're going to draft all these you know defensive ends and these edges and then turn around and sign Frank Clark and give him some decent-sized money, you may have to cut Mike Dana. And that leads me to believe is – in your opinion, Steve, is Mike Dana worth cutting just to bring back Frank Clark? I don't know. Well, honestly, production-wise, they're pretty much the same last year. I think he had 16 solo tackles, 9 assists, 5 sacks, and 2 forced fumbles from Mike Dana. And Frank Clark, during the regular season, you had 26 solo tackles, 6 assists, 6 sacks, and 1 forced fumble. So almost exact on the number. So the production's about the same. Obviously, Frank Clark offers you more of a leadership kind of guy, a guy that can get out there and help these young ones. Uh, and you know he's going to go off in the playoffs, so that's good to have. But, I mean, really, Mike Dana plays well when he's able to stay healthy and be on the field, and he, he does some good things. So, I mean, honestly, I don't know. If you could get Frank Clark for pennies on the dollar, then maybe you go that route. But otherwise, I don't, I don't know if it's worth it. Look, I think Mike Dana has been solid. He's been in the league now for uh... – I think he was drafted in 2020, so he's been in the league for three years. Uh, he's just 25 years old. We we drafted him in the fifth round out of Michigan. Uh, in 2020, he had 15 quarterback pressures, and he had 12 stops and 13 regular season games played, according to PFF. In 2021, he had 22 QB pressures and two forced fumbles, 12 stops, and 17 regular season games played and in 2022 he had 35 QB pressures 17 stops and two forced fumbles and 13 regular season games played so he has progressed 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 Mike Dana could be on the verge of a breakout season we've seen him single-handedly pretty much destroy Justin Herbert against the Chargers last year and caused that entire game to just completely switch turned on a dime got the Chiefs the the dub and I, I don't know if I want to give on Mike Dana right now. I, I think I would prefer Mike Dana, and I would prefer to keep his $3 million than to go off and pay Frank Clark even more. Right. I don't know how the financials are on all this, but I think there's some guys that we could get rid of in that room 
that are not Mike Dana. Joshua Kando can hit the bricks, man. He he's not working out. It's just not going to happen. I don't see it happening. Uh, Malik Herring, he's always getting the the camp hype and stuff like that, but he hasn't made the team yet. I don't think it's there. Maybe they can look at doing some of that kind of stuff and not look at Dana if they want to if they can get a really good deal on Frank Clark for one year or something like that. I don't know. I don't know if it's possible, but either way, uh, the way I see it, Frank Clark, it'd be awesome to have him. But do we need to cut him, lose $7 million, turn around and re-sign him? I don't think that's the greatest plan. I don't think that was a good idea from the get-go. So I don't see it happening, really. Uh, but I wouldn't be opposed to it if it did. So the, the defensive end room, a lot of people ask us all the time, uh, how many wide receivers are we taking? How many this? How many that? Well, how many edges are the Chiefs going to take? How many defensive ends are we going to take? Because last year they surprised us and took – I want to say they took one more than everybody thought we were going to take last year. Did they not? Uh, I feel like they put somebody on the roster last year that everybody was thinking was going to get cut. It was Kando or uh, Malik Herring, somebody like that. But if you look at the roster this year, we went out and signed Charles Aminahue. We drafted Felix Anudike Uzoma in round one. We drafted B.J. Thompson. You've got George Karloftis. I'm with you. I think Kando is firmly on that cutting, like like that chopping block. Right. And to be honest, Malik Herring could be right there with him. Yep. I just don't see these guys being able to come in and perform the way we think they're going to. I would rather put a little time into B.J. Thompson, see what you can get out of them. And I think O'Minahue and even Mike Dana, those two guys should be able to move down to the inside, play that defensive tackle position next to Chris Jones sometimes, and that's what they do. These are uh, Spags pieces that he moves up and down the line. This is what he wants. And to be honest, you can't do that with Frank Clark. Frank Clark is too little to kick inside. He's just too little. Um I would say Enyudike Uzoma is too little to do that as well, but could we try? You know, Spags is going to move them around. Spags is going to move them around a lot, but I'm with you. I don't think Mike Dana is the guy to give up on right now. I think he's had flashes, and I think that he could have a breakout year. Who knows, man? But I don't think he's the one to get rid of. I just don't. I I, I feel more comfortable with Mike Dana in the game. That could you imagine if Joshua Kando had to come in and put in valuable minutes or Malik right. Hearing or someone like that? Like I would be way more comfortable with Mike Dana doing it. So I, I don't think I want to get rid of him. Yeah, I don't want to either. I think I like I like what we've got with Mike Dana. I like the way we've developed Mike Dana. Um, I think we just we just keep Mike Dana. If that means we don't bring back Frank Clark, then we don't bring back the Shark. I, I don't know what to tell you, right. but I guess Chris Jones is going to be a little <laughs> sad. But uh, I, I assume Chris Jones probably wants to get paid himself more than he wants to see Frank Clark get paid. Uh, just an assumption. Right. We still have that whole extension and and uh deal to get done right so that's got to be coming up soon because we got to lock up we got to lock up stone cold for the long the long haul man he's going to be a life lifelong chief so we gotta get that done we got bigger fish to fry than the shark right now i don't know if that (laughs) i didn't mean that pun but that was a pun that was a pun speaking of fish (laughs) speaking of frying fish what is going on with tyreek hill steve uh, this guy just keeps (laughs) running that mouth it's constant uh they had time. Never ends. Yeah, they had uh, Legereus Sneed on NFL Network talking about him. I think that was the night before the schedule release. We all thought right. we were gonna we were gonna get to see Tyreek in Arrowhead. Uh, not so much. They put it in Germany. Uh, Steve, mm-hmm. what do you think about the Sneed thing? What do you think about the Chiefs? Do you think that they're bummed that he's not coming to Arrowhead? Maybe a little bit because I think they wanted to get him back in Arrowhead and beat the living crap out of the guy, right? Because he just can't shut up. Uh, all he does is talk trash. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit before, but I think Tyreek Hill knows that he screwed up. I think Tyreek Hill's a little bit butthurt that the team didn't need him, that they went on without him. They flourished. They won a Super Bowl. Uh, he wasn't what he thought he was in that system, okay? He just wasn't. We did not need Tyreek Hill. Brett Veach knew that. Andy Reid knew that. That's why he's a Dolphin. Uh, but I think he's a little butthurt about it. And I think since he feels like he probably made the wrong decision, um, the only thing he can do is talk trash to make himself feel better about it, right? I mean, what else is this guy doing? He's just looking for attention. I think that's the reason why Tyreek Hill ended up in Miami anyway, personally, is because he wanted all the attention. He couldn't have it in Kansas City because we have somebody named Patrick Mahomes on the team. Uh, going down to Miami, that team, they're more of an up-and-coming team. They don't have any real big names. So I think Tyreek thought he could go down there and be the man. And so far, I mean, he has been. He had a great season down there and everything. But I still think he's hurt a little bit just because the Chiefs did not need him and they proved it. Uh, but Legere Sneed was on NFL Total Access, I believe, and they were asking him about it. And he was talking about Tyreek Hill, talking a lot of trash. And he was like, we'll see what happens when he gets here. 
and stuff like that. So I think he's just tired of it, and I think a lot of the other players are tired of it too, man. Who wouldn't be? This guy has called us uh, just derogatory names that you would hear third grade children that learned a new word right. call. Um, he just doesn't shut up. He doesn't. So over the weekend, he got in this uh, Twitter altercation with Micah Parsons, linebacker yeah. from the Dallas Cowboys. These two um, going at it. Uh, Michael Parsons actually tweeted out and said, big shout out to the big guy, at Andrew Whitworth, for taking out the time in his week to help me grow as a player. So basically, he worked out with Andrew Whitworth. He was given a thank you tweet, and he says, we will only grow from those who have accomplished what we seek. So he was kind of giving some props to Andrew Whitworth for giving him some time. Right. Uh, Tyreek retweeted that. He quote tweeted it and said, so now you're a motivational speaker. I'm confused. So apparently, that set off Michael Parsons, and Michael Parsons started John back at him. And basically, here's what he said. He said, at Cheetah, uh, you're just mad Kansas City is thriving without him, and he's trying to bring Cowboys Nation down with him. Uh, he's never been the same since he's been in Miami. He started <laughs> losing his mind. And then, of course, Tyree Kill true, just— true, though. Right. And then Tyree Kill quote tweeted him and said, you win, bro. Um, of course he does. Of course he won. Uh, today, to add into this, Chris Jones quote, quote tweets Tyreek Hill's you win, bro, and puts a picture of Stephen A. Smith drinking out of a cup, like with some side eyes, like you got owned. <laughs> um, yeah, so Chris Jones, everybody is tired of Tyreek Hill, and I feel like Tyreek Hill's doing it for like publicity attention. for his podcast. It's attention. It's this. It's attention. that. And he thinks it's all lighthearted, but at a certain point, I feel like you just start feeling like this guy is just turncoat on you like he's just turned into an ultimate villain he's wanting to trash talk the city you love the city you play for the city that supported Tyree Kill by the way when he was going through everything from child abuse allegations right. to uh beating his girlfriend in college you name it this city embraced him they went to bat for him and then he comes out and this is how he repays us and I think Tyreek thinks it's all fun and games but at some point I feel like these players just don't like it Steve well, I mean, Tyreek's maturity level is that of a third grader. You already said it. Uh, what was even the point of trying to make fun of Micah Parsons and the Andrew Whitworth thing? I don't I don't get that at all. It's like, hey, nobody looked at me today yet, so let me start some crap. Uh, but Micah Parsons just literally hit him with the truth, man. He, he dropped a truth bomb on there. And Tyreek Kill had no choice but to say, yeah, you win. Because if he went any further, right. he, knew, he knew he was going to get exposed further. Because Micah people, Parsons wasn't playing. Right. Some people thought that it was kind of an odd fight. Like, just the same way you well, just yeah. said. Like, why are you picking a fight with Micah Parsons? Uh, why did Micah Parsons go zero to a thousand that quick? So a lot of people thought it was like a setup little tiff on Twitter to get some attention to for some publicity or something, and Micah went too far, or I don't know. But I no, don't think I it mean, was set up at all. I don't either. I think that – I don't think Micah Parsons overreacted either. I mean, it's like, shut up mind your business, man. Like, he's just trying to put a shout-out to Whitworth – and be like, you know, awesome, awesome time with him. Learned a lot from him, stuff like that. And Tyreek has to, you know, basically just be a smart ass about it. And for no reason. Like, no one asked him. Nobody pulled a string. He just injected himself into that conversation. And he got owned. End of story. And I think it's funny. Um, I, I give props to Micah Parsons on that one, man. Because I think he had it coming. But enough about Tyreek Hill. Because I just don't like the guy. Uh, but we'll talk about the schedule a little bit. I really thought, I had a gut feeling that we were going to play the Dolphins in the home opener uh, to get Tyreek Hill into Arrowhead. All eyes in America on the home opener there. I thought that's what was going to happen, but of course they put it in Germany. Uh, but yeah, they're trying to expand the international thing, Mike, so it makes sense to me that they put a game like that, you know, in the Germany game. What about you? What do you think happened there? Yeah, I think, I think they dropped the ball a little bit by not letting Tyreek come back to Arrowhead. Uh, was it the opening game? We thought that would be a cool like thing to start. You know, who doesn't want to see the NFL kickoff with Tyreek Hill coming back to Arrowhead, talking trash? Like we thought that game would have exploded the entire planet. But at the same time, the NFL already explained, "Hey, look, we the Chiefs had to to host. They had to host on Thursday night. So they look at the right. Chiefs' schedule and they say, look." It doesn't matter who we put against the Chiefs. The Chiefs are drawing people. This is the first game of the season. Everybody's pumped. Everybody, right. we, we, we talk about it all the time. We said everybody hates the Chiefs, but they sure love to watch us. And it's true. So 
the Chiefs opening night, they could have put anybody in there. They could have put the uh, the champion of the XFL against the Chiefs, and everybody would have watched Right, it. well, that's exactly what the guy that works for the NFL said. That was his explanation, was that it doesn't matter who plays the Chiefs in the home opener. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs are going to be there, so they, they already have eyes on them. They're already going to sell out Arrowhead Stadium. Everybody's going to want to watch it, so why waste a game like the Dolphins game in the home opener when they can use it for the international game? Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, so what's your thoughts on the home opener? It, it turned out to be the Detroit Lions. Uh, yep. It's going to take place on September 7th, 8.20 p.m. Um, I'm guessing that's Eastern time. So they already asked the coach, Dan Campbell. And Dan Campbell, he said that they actually wanted, like he was talking right. to his coaches, and they wanted to open up against the Chiefs on opening night. So they want to come out and prove that they're an up-and-coming team, that they can compete with the champ. That's what he said. He wants to see where they're at. He wants a litmus test. He wants to compete with Patrick Mahomes and the champions on what night one. Not to mention that, but he gets an extra three days to, to go into week two. So this is what he said with his coaches. They actually wanted this. And he says that he believes the NFL actually scheduled this game because they believe in the Lions, that they wouldn't want to see the Chiefs open up and beat the Lions in a blowout. So he believes that the NFL has faith in the Lions to make it a competitive game. Uh, what do you think, Steve? Do you think it's going to be a blowout? Do you think it's competitive? Do you think the Chiefs may uh, run into a buzzsaw with an up-and-coming Detroit Lions game and just get shocked on opening night? Man, I can respect what Dan Campbell had to say because I've said the th same thing. Like This is a huge opportunity for an up-and-coming young team like the Detroit Lions to play Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs in the first game of the season. It's exactly what he said. You can see where this team is at. Yeah, I totally agree. The Lions, sh they're going to be good, but I don't think they'll beat the Chiefs. I don't think they will. I think the Chiefs are going to handle business. But they did sign uh, Gardner Johnson, the safety in the offseason, that played in the Super Bowl with the Eagles. And you've got to hear this quote that I found from him. He says, uh, not only that, but we get Kansas City, the heavyweight champ. We're excited. I can't even tell you. And it's going to be great. And then Gardner Johnson basically comes in and says that he wants to beat the Chiefs. Like, he cannot wait to spoil our ring ceremony, our banner ceremony. Uh, Gardner Johnson, that's what he's playing for. So, again, the Lions are coming in and they're playing for something. Is it enough to beat the Chiefs? I don't think Andy Reid, he's the king of bye week. And basically, he's got, uh, what, like four months to get, to get ready for Detroit. So, moving on. From the Lions-Chiefs games, the second game on our schedule is actually the Chiefs-Jaguars, Steve. And a lot of Chiefs Kingdom are marking this down as an L. Like, what do you think? Do you think the Jaguars, I, I, it's at Jacksonville, do you think that's a loss? No, I don't. I think Jacksonville's uh, a much tougher test than the Detroit Lions. I think that uh, Jacksonville's already a playoff team. We all saw them last season. Really good. They put up a good game against us in the playoffs. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is only going to get better. Uh, they actually have an approved roster coming in. They have uh, a, a little guy named Calvin Ridley now that is going to be playing for them. After his suspension was up last year, they went and got him. So, I mean, that team's only going to be better than they were. Um, they had a decent draft. So, I mean, I think that is a tough matchup. But I don't think the Chiefs are going to drop it in game two. It is in Jacksonville. But, I mean, the Chiefs tend to play a little bit better on the road anyway than they do at home, which is kind of weird to me. But uh, I'm not marking it down as an L, no. Yeah, I don't see us losing to Jacksonville either. I don't know why that's the popular one. Uh, the Chiefs just don't lose a lot in September. It's that simple. I just don't see right. it. Uh, so if we move on, the Bears, game three. The Bears are who we thought we were originally going to play in Germany, and the Chiefs actually fought. They refused said, no, we want the Bears for a home game in Arrowhead. So... That's what they wanted. I guess they feel the Bears are going to travel well. Uh, let's be honest. It doesn't matter who our games no. are in Arrowhead. The ticket prices are going to be out the wazoo, and it's going to be standing sold room out. only. It's sold out. <laughs> for real. So, actually, I have us beating the Bears. I don't think that should be a problem beating Justin Fields. I'm sure you agree with me, which brings us to 3-0 and going into week four. Uh, this is a big one, Steve. Aaron Rodgers, we have to go play in New York. We have Mahomes versus Rodgers. They did not get that last year because Rodgers was injured or whenever that was, and we actually had to play Jordan Love. Uh, no one's seen it yet. Right, no one's so seen it. Do you think the Jets are going to be good this year? A lot of people are saying they're a dark horse to win it all. What do you? What's your thoughts on the Jets, and do you think the Chiefs drop this game? So the Jets are going to be better than last year. The last couple of years, they've picked up a lot of good guys in the draft. they got a lot of good young talent. 
And you're not going to upgrade your quarterback to Aaron Rodgers and expect him to be worse. I just don't think that's going to happen. It could take a little bit for them to get things, you know, clicking. But I think they're going to be better than they were last year. Do I think they're going to be a playoff team? I don't know. I, I think they're going to be right on that line, maybe. Uh, it could happen, but I kind of doubt it. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Aaron Rodgers, he's not the same old Aaron Rodgers that we're used to. He's getting a little older. He's in a new environment, new offense, new coaches. This is something new for him. So I don't know. You can't really just say that they're going to be great because they have great names on their team. I'm not too worried about the matchup, but I am excited to watch it. I think everybody's excited to finally see Patrick Mahomes versus Aaron Rodgers because no one's seen the State Farm Bowl yet because it just has not worked out that way. In all these years, I don't know how it hasn't happened yet, but it hasn't. But that's what's slated for week four, man. I'm excited about it. But I think a lot of people do have that circled on their uh, schedules just because of that fact. But I don't think anybody's, like, really scared of the Jets, I don't think. I don't understand why they would. Aaron Rodgers basically had the same talent around him in Green Bay and couldn't get it done last year. He took every bit of the receivers that he complained about, and he mm-hmm. brought him over to a different shade of green, and now miraculously, sense, right? uh, you're getting a running back named Brees Hall that's coming off an ACL, who is not better than Aaron Jones, by the way. So you're downgrading there. You're downgrading on the offensive line. I just don't understand how everybody thinks that now that he's with the Jets, it's just it's some great thing. I don't know, but October does come in with a bang there with the Jets game, and October is a brutal October, Steve. There's five games. Uh, The next game up on the schedule is the Vikings at Minnesota. So we go to the Jets, then we go to Minnesota. If Patrick Mahomes wins on October 8th against the Vikings, Steve, he will have beat every team in the NFL. Um, Do you think he's going to get the dub against the Vikings, or do you think uh, the Vikings give us the first loss of the season? I think it could be a tough game, but I think the Chiefs got that one. I just don't think that the – I don't know. I just can't see a scenario where – we should lose to the Vikings, especially if Patrick Mahomes knows he just needs to beat them to, uh, you know, wrap it up that he's beat every team in the NFL. That's something kind of something little insignificant thing, but it's also something kind of cool. Right. And uh, if he knows it, he might not even know that. I mean, I don't see I don't think players keep up with that kind of thing, but I'm sure he'll hear it. I bet he uh, does. I bet but he either knows. way, either way, I think the Chiefs are a much better team. Uh, I think our defense is going to be much improved from last year. Um, I'm not, I've just, it's crazy, man. Like, I feel like our defense, our, our secondary, uh, really stepped up last season with those young guys and, and they've got a whole season under their belt. And, uh, here we are still adding pieces to it like Jamari Connor. And, um, uh, I don't know, man. I just like people like Justin Jefferson don't scare me that much. Like I know they're good and I know they could put up a lot of numbers on you, but I don't think they're going to kill you. I just don't like, I feel like our guys are that like good enough. And and I think that the I think that will take care of business. Well, I feel like going against Kirk Cousins shouldn't scare many people. Let's be right. honest. So at the end of the day, it's just Kirk Cousins. Everybody, it's it's not that big of a deal. They lost Adam Thielen. He's gone. Um, they did. Did they draft another receiver? I can't even remember. Um, I feel like they took yeah they one took of the uh, Jordan Addison in the first round, I believe. No, I thought Jordan Addison went to the Seahawks. Am I wrong? Yes, you're wrong. He's going to the Vikings with Justin Jefferson. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I was never huge on Jordan Addison to begin with. I think he's good. Um, I don't know if he was worth a first round pick in my opinion. I think the, I mean, I don't know. He's not, I don't see him being a guy that hits the ground running. I could be wrong. Uh, but I just don't see that being a big thing. I don't know, man. I, I think the chiefs got that one in the bag. I'm not too worried about it. I'm not going to re- reflect on it a whole lot. Are you seriously fact checking me? You're looking up to see if Jordan Addison actually went there. Mike, I know what I'm talking about. Just listen Look, to me. I'm looking at the next three games on the schedule, Steve. After the Vikings, <laughs> it's Broncos, Chargers, Broncos. Okay, we're not going right. to get into every one of those games. I don't want to do no. an individual game rundown this week. No, 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 no. Um, I just want to highlight some key games. But you know for a fact, it, this is another season, another Broncos, Broncos, two out of three weeks scenario. I don't know what the deal is with the NFL doing that to the Chiefs. I have no idea. Do they think that's some kind of a Denver, like, um, an advantage, Denver somehow? I don't get why they keep doing this because it's obviously not to favor Kansas City. Um, Broncos, Chargers, Broncos. Out of those three games, obviously we think the Chargers is probably the one game that the Chiefs could drop in that scenario. But the Chiefs could drop one of the two games against the Broncos. We struggled against them last year. We should have beat them twice by, you know, 21 points. And not to mention, we actually have some letdown games early in the season. Last year, we had a letdown game against the Colts right off the rip. 
So the Chiefs, week four maybe yeah, something so like that. Yeah. I don't feel like the Chiefs are just necessarily going to come out and go eight and zero, nine and zero. I think people that that think that just want to be very positive about it, but I don't think realistically right. you can look at it and say that. So well, yeah, <laughs> you just never know. Like the, there's a lot of parity in the NFL. Things can happen. I mean, it is what it is, but I mean, like, if you look at it objectively, the reason why you always just want to say the Chiefs are going to win is because the Chiefs are the better team. Let's be honest here. Right now, the Chiefs are the best team in the NFL. We know this. Why? They won the Lombardi. Um, We are the reigning champions. We've improved our roster uh, with the draft and with free agency. And I I think there's no reason to think that we can't beat every team we face. So, of course, when you're breaking it down like that, you're always going to pick the Chiefs. Hey, well, you're Uh, not alone. but, But things happen. You're not alone. DK Sportsbook actually released the fact that they and they said that the Kansas City Chiefs are the only NFL team favored in all 17 games this coming season, according right. to DK Sportsbook. And, that's and what's right crazy now, about that right is now. they're actually projected to have the third toughest schedule, the the third uh, in strength of schedule, and that was released by Chiefs Wire. Did a story about that, talking about it. I mean, originally they the NFL had put one out and had them like middle of the pack because they were going by winning percentage of the other teams. Uh, but yeah. they're they're projecting it to be the third toughest strength of schedule right now. So the fact that they're you know projecting them that, or they're favored in every game and they have that toughest schedule that says something. Right, it's all over the map. They come out and said it was an easy schedule. Then they said it was the fifth hardest. Then the fourth hardest. And now you're saying it's the third hardest. Uh, by the time the season gets going, this could be the hardest schedule in, in the game. Well, that's the I thing. Th- it's so early, nobody knows. Everybody's just guessing. So it's kind of dumb when you really want to stop and think about it. But either way, I mean, just looking at it, uh, you know, from last season's schedule, I think it's a better, more favorable schedule than, schedule than last season, in my opinion. Um, that could prove to not be true. You have to see how these teams are going to be playing this year, right? Right. Well, speaking of hard schedules, we kick off November going to Germany to play Tyreek and the Dolphins. And uh-huh. then we follow it up with a home game against the Eagles. So we play the Dolphins, which is a very good team on the road. Uh, we'll have to see if Tua will be healthy for that game. I'm sure the NFL don't want to send Skylar Thompson versus Mahomes over there. But yeah, hmm. coming back, playing the Eagles, that's a Super Bowl matchup. This schedule is brutal, Steve. Because Did you say Super no Bowl way. matchup? Yeah, a potential, like a rematch of the Super Bowl and a potential Super Bowl matchup this year with the Ch- Eagles Chiefs. I honestly oh, I thought you were talking good. about the Dolphins. I'm sorry. That's no. why I asked that. Uh, but, yeah, I do believe that Dolphins, Eagles, I don't think the Chiefs can come out of that stretch, going to Germany and coming back and playing the the Eagles. Can they come out of that undefeated? Can they come out of that 2-0 and and just those two? Because I think something tells me they have to drop one of those two. Can they? Yes. I mean, like I just said, they're the best team. If you break it down individually, they are better than the Dolphins. They're better than the Eagles. So, yeah, it's it's easy to sit there and look at it and be like, yeah, they're the better team. They should win both of those games. But like I said, it's the NFL. Things happen. Things go wrong. Uh, some Sometimes you just have a bad week, right? But, um, I mean, I think they're the better team. So would it surprise me if they, they beat Miami and turn around and beat the, the Eagles? No. No, it wouldn't. Right. So uh, November 26th, we finally get to play the Raiders. That should be a win right there before we eat some turkey. That shouldn't be too bad. And then we go to play the Packers on December 3rd. Even though that's in Green Bay, I still think the Chiefs should be favored to win that game. We should handle business. I don't think Jordan Love should be that much of a threat. Uh, And then it gets a little tougher again. Uh, We're back against the AFC East for two straight games. We have the Bills coming into Arrowhead, and then we go to New England up in Foxborough. Steve, Bills, we never beat the Bills. We've played the Bills 14 times in the last 20 years. We've only beat them, I want to say, six times in the regular season. We just always... Let the Bills beat us in the regular season. And then the right. Patriots in Foxborough, I want to say that's a Monday night game. That's two tough ones again right here at the end of the year. And uh, I'll just go ahead and line out the next three, too, and I'll let you talk about all of them. We get the Raiders again. Then the Bengals come to Arrowhead on uh, New Year's Eve, and then we end the season at the Chargers. So Bills, Patriots, Raiders, Bengals, Chargers – this is a brutal schedule. It just keeps going and going. This is like the evil energizer bunny of schedules. It just never stops. Yeah, but I'm not, like I said, not worried about any of it. Uh, like you mentioned, though, Buffalo, like at the initial look, that's one game that I, I marked down that the Chiefs are going to drop, right? Because they just suck against them in the regular season, uh, especially lately. It's like, I don't know what the deal is with that. Like we just beat them in the playoffs 
uh, after we drop one to them in the regular season, which I'm fine with that formula. It don't, doesn't bother me a bit because that's definitely how you want it to go. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the, the only other team that I feel like you could maybe drop one to, you can almost chalk one up to the Chargers, right? I mean, they yeah. always play us so tough. It's the only time of the year that they play – like a contender, like everyone says they are. The only time that you ever see that come to fruition is against the Chiefs. Uh, you can watch them play the Chiefs down to the very last second and maybe even beat the Chiefs. And then the next week they turn around and get blown off the field by God knows who, the Arizona Cardinals or somebody, and just look like a peewee football team. Uh, that's just the Chargers. But, um, yeah, all divisional matchups are going to be close, even though, I mean, obviously better than the Broncos and the Raiders. Uh, the Broncos we've talked about a little bit. They are going to be improved just because Sean Payton's going to make the team better. Is he going to do it overnight? Probably not. But, I mean, he is going to help. So I think they'll be a little bit tougher an opponent than they were last year. And last year they kind of gave us some trouble even though they sucked so bad. Yeah. So, hey, I mean, a lot this of pe- is what it is. Yeah, a lot of people do not like this schedule. Uh, Matt Lane, KC Sports Network, he absolutely hates it. People hate the fact that we got a Christmas game, that we got a New Year's Eve game. Uh, you know, so many. I think we travel. Like we're one of the most, our we're one of the top ten most traveled teams of the year, and I also believe that there was a stat released today that said we actually play more games off short rest days. So we play more games on short rest than everybody else. So the yeah. NFL was coming after us this year. It, it's Don't no they surprise. Always. <laughs> it is what I, it is, man. According to NFL fans, we're the most babied franchise in the world. They forgot that Tom Brady and them existed for all those years. Um, which game, Steve? Out of all these games. Name one or two games that you're most excited to watch. Like, is there anything on the schedule that you're circling saying, hey, I cannot wait. This is going to be a fun game. Uh, the Germany game against Miami, just because I really want them to put Tyreek in his place. Not so excited I think about the 7.30 a.m., Steve. No, I'm not excited about all that. But, I mean, I'm excited for them to just shut that dude up once and for all, right? Sure. Like, let's, let's just go for that. Uh, other than that, man, I mean, there's nothing that just, like, really thrills me. Uh, I will be excited to beat the Bengals again uh, on New Year's Eve. That will be nice just to get that back to, like, Burrow 3, Mahomes 2. I'm sure they'll still act like that's some crazy difference, but i just so tired of Bengals fans. But the game I'm most excited for, you know me, Mike, is a Christmas game. I'm so pumped that there's a Christmas game this year. Love Christmas, and it's it's like my, my jam. And then I get to watch the Chiefs beat the Raiders on Christmas this year, so it's going to make the day even better. Did we have a la- Did we have one last year, like a Christmas no, Eve? No, Christmas something? Eve. Christmas, Christmas Eve against Eve. the Seahawks. Right, we yep. won that game. Yes, we did. That, that was a good game. Um, I'll tell you what I like about this schedule this year, Steve. I'm looking through it, and we're playing teams that, as a lifelong Chiefs fan, we don't get to play very often. I like it. It seems like a fresh schedule. Like, we're usually playing the same teams over and over. Even the out-of-conference games, it, it's the same teams. It's the Seattles. It's the Tampa Bays. It's the same things. But we actually get to play the Lions. Uh, the Jaguars isn't even like a game that's overdone, in my opinion. We get to play the Bears. We don't never hardly get to play the Bears, it don't seem. The Jets, the Vikings. Uh, like you mentioned, the Dolphins, we get the Eagles, we get the Packers, and of course we always get the Bills. We've been getting the Bengals lately, of course. The Patriots are even a fun game. Usually we wallop the Patriots. Remember that time we almost they said we ended Tom Brady's career on that Monday night game and beat them so bad? Like 44 to 3 or something crazy like that? I don't we, remember. but We are the nuts. Patriots, uh, Buffalo Bills in the regular season. Like We trounce <laughs> the, the Patriots in the regular season every time we get a chance. But, yeah, I'm very excited about just the new matchups. Like, I'm pretty right. excited about the opening night game against the Lions. It's not every day you get to play the Lions. Uh, that's just a team we don't ever get to play. So, it's fun to play them. It's fun to play I the I think Jags. the last time we played the Lions was at Ford Field. And I think that's the game that Travis Kelsey, like, caught the pass, lateraled it to Shady McCoy and all that crazy stuff. It was a close game. Yeah, the Lions um, sucked it was, a, then. it was fun to watch. Yeah, the Lions were absolutely terrible, and they almost beat us. That's what I'm saying. The Chiefs, everybody's like, oh, this is 17-0. This is 18-0. This is 19 Guys, come on. It's not. It's tough to win. It's not. It's, it's be tough so to win hard. any game in the NFL. Andy Reid will tell you that over and over again. And it, it's, it's the truth, man. Like, the differences between these teams are minuscule. Well, until I mean, you you're, see how many games Carl Cheffers is going to officiate, Steve, <laughs> I cannot tell you. You can't really you. make a prediction. No, I think our, our initial look at it, we were like, ah, I think about 13 and four would be fair. That'd be good. Yep. And, uh, but of course it's way too early to be, be going through that. So that's just where I'll leave it. 
but yeah, decent schedule. I'm excited for this season. I know all you guys out there are too. So, but yeah. Okay, well, I think that's going to wrap it up for today, guys. Uh, wherever you're listening, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever, give us a five-star review. If you're on YouTube, we appreciate you. This is a new feature. We're going to throw some at you on Mondays, and we're going to try to do Thursdays as well. So go ahead and hit that like button, leave a comment. It helps with the algorithm. And uh, share it with your friends. Anybody likes the Chiefs, anybody wants to pop this in, listen to it while you're at work, whatever you're doing. Your drive to work, actually. That's a good one, too. And but hit yeah. that freaking sub button if you haven't already. Let's get to 10K, baby. That's what we're going to do. Right. And if you like this video, watch this video. Pink. <laughs> All right. Y'all have a good one, Chiefs Kingdom. Stay safe out there. See ya. Thanks for tuning in. You've been listening to All Chiefed Up. Be sure to subscribe and follow on all social media at All Chiefed Up.